In this video, you will learn how to set up and run a topology optimization within the Topology Optimization Toolkit. We will set up this top op template step by step and run a topology optimization on this simple bracket. We will begin in the Topology Optimization tab within our ribbon and select the Single Body Topology Optimization block. We will now start breaking down each input and filling out the parameters necessary to run a topology optimization. First, we will import our part using the Import Part block and select the file location of our geometry. Now I will begin extracting the relevant features of my part. I double click my part to select the entire body, which I will designate as the design region for the analysis, and then right click to make it a variable. I single click the interfaces that will be restrained and loaded, and once again right click to make them variables. I'm going to rename them so that I can easily access them later when setting up the topology optimization. Also, to keep my notebook organized, I'm going to input comments between each important step within this process. Now we will start designating our design space. This requires creating an effing mesh of our design region. To do this, I will start by creating a mesh from my CAD body. For the first input of this block, I'm going to drag in the design region that I designated earlier. The max edge length input is optional. This controls the maximum edge length of any triangle within the mesh. Next, I'm going to refine this initial surface mesh using the remesh surface block. In the surface input, I can drag in my mesh from CAD body. I will designate an edge length, which is the target edge length of the elements generated. Now I can select the shape of my output mesh and will select triangle in the drop down menu. I'm not going to alter the default values in the other parameters and will leave the optional inputs empty. Now I can create a volume mesh in my geometry with the volume mesh block and can drag my remesh surface block into the domain input. It is important that the edge length of my volume mesh matches the edge length that was designated in my remesh surface block, so I will put a value of 2 millimeters here, and leave the rest of the parameters as their default values. Now I can create an FE volume mesh for my design space, and I can drag my volume mesh block into the first input of my FE volume mesh block, and select the geometric order within the drop-down menu. I am choosing a linear geometric order to perform a faster analysis. Choosing the quadratic order will result in more accuracy, but a longer computation time. To keep my notebook clean, I'm going to make my design space a variable, drag my FE volume mesh block into my design space variable, and then I will be done filling out this parameter of my topology optimization. The next parameter within the block is material. Here I will input an isotropic material for the design space by using the isotropic material block. In this example, I will only need to designate elastic properties of the material using the isotropic elastic property block and will input values for my Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. Once again, I'm going to make my material variable, and now I'm done filling out this parameter within my block. The next parameter to be completed is the design response list. In this example, we will designate a structural compliance response, and our objective will be to minimize compliance by maximizing stiffness. Once we select the structural compliance response block, we are now able to designate boundary conditions. Here is where we will input our displacement restraints and forces using the displacement restraint and force blocks. Within the boundary input of each of these blocks, we will input an FE face boundary, which creates mesh entities using a list of CAD faces. In the mesh will be the FE mesh we created earlier, which was our design space. So I'm going to just type in the name of that variable that we designated earlier to fill out this parameter. Next, the entity I'm going to select are the nodes of these regions. I'm going to add another input to my list and add my force and repeat the same process for this boundary condition. You'll notice when I isolate the views of my force and restraints that their strengths are designated in red and the force in yellow. When I zoom in on the force region, 
the arrows will indicate the direction the force is being applied. I'm going to make my design response variable, drag it into my response input, and now I'm finished with this parameter. The last parameter within my topology optimization is the design constraint list. Here I will use a volume fraction constraint, which constrains the volume fraction of my design space to remain below, in this case, my input value of 0.2. This value can be anywhere between 0 and 1. This essentially means that the resulting volume of my geometry will be less than this designated value. Now that all my parameters are completed, my topology optimization will run and output a raw result. A HUD will appear on the right side of the screen where I can choose between an ISO, contour, or threshold element view of my result. By selecting the slider bar and dragging, I can vary the threshold and iteration amount. Now to transform this raw result into a smooth body, I will use the Construct Optimized Body block. The first input will be my raw topology optimization result. Next, I will designate my threshold amount, which is the density threshold to be extracted from the topology optimization. For best results, a good value to use for the grid size will be similar to the average mesh size of the topology optimization. Now I need to reintroduce those interfaces or passive regions back into my design. So what I need to do is convert those interfaces to an end top bodies, thicken those end top bodies, and then union them with the smoothen body result. So I grab my thickened body block, and in the body input, I'm going to use my end top body from CAD body block and drag my interfaces into that input. I'm going to assign a thickness, and then after doing this, I'm going to use a Boolean union to union these geometries together. Once I have these regions, I can now union them to my smooth and body result. I'm also going to add a value to the blend radius in the Boolean union to make a nice smooth transition between my featured bodies and my smoothen body. You'll notice that my interfaces are rounded at the top and bottom. In order to remove this roundness or bleed over, I will do a final Boolean intersect between this geometry and my initial design region. I now have my final body and have successfully completed topology optimization. Thanks for watching.